this morning. Uh, we have a board meeting following worship this morning. Are there any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship. Please stand as you're able.
our purpose. And each Sunday we are looking at a different aspect of our faith and diving in a little bit about how we can be purposeful in building that up. Today we're going to look at prayer. And I think you might be a little surprised. It's not a typical sermon on prayer. But first we're going to hear scriptures from Jeremiah 29, 11 and Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Jeremiah says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. And from Philippians 4, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When I was younger, I played a lot of sports. And being from a small town, you know how it is. The coaches tend to coach multiple things. So by the time you graduate and move on, you've gotten to know those coaches really well. And they've gotten to know you pretty well also. When I was in high school basketball, one of the coaches pulled me aside and he said, I want to teach you how to breathe. My smart teenager mouth said, you know, I've been doing that literally my entire life. Got it down pat. In fact, I don't even need to think about it. I can do it when I'm thinking on other things. And he said, okay, here's how you breathe. When you need more power, take shallow breaths through your mouth. This is good during timeouts. When you need to relieve stress, take long breaths through your nose. Do this on the free throw line before you shoot. Try this now, he said. And that was really smart of him because I was just kind of going to ignore what he said. But he had me to try it there. And you're not going to believe this. It made a difference. It's almost like he knew what he was talking about. But breathing is one of the most fundamental things that we do. One might say it's the most fundamental thing that we do. And it's also one of the things that we can control in our bodies. Breathing is life. It activates our bodies. It enlivens us. Breath and breath work responses. It responds to both daily stress and to trauma. There's a lot of research out there now how they're using breath work and breathing exercises to treat trauma victims. Those who are coming back with post-traumatic stress syndrome, the soldiers that are fighting overseas, they are finding a lot of good things happening when they use breathing exercises to help heal the trauma. Breathing helps our bodies heal. When our bodies get a lot of oxygen, they function really well. They feel good. All of the things work a lot better. And if you're not sure about this, wait until you have a hard time getting oxygen in your body. Then you know just how vital it is. But there's fascinating stuff out there of what they're doing with breathing exercises and healing these days. And the thing is, it doesn't heal just our physical bodies. It helps to heal us emotionally and spiritually. Talking to God should also be the most natural thing in the world. Should be the most fundamental thing we do, right? Well, it turns out it is. Breathing is communicating with God. At its most basic, Breath and prayer are the same things. You may not buy it at this point, but just hang in there with me for a little bit. I'm not going to go into all the science about how our breaths support our physical body and then also our emotional and spiritual bodies. You can read about that, Google it. A lot of fascinating stuff out there. But breath prayers were used by the early Christians to pray. When Jesus died, the disciples went about spreading the faith and starting churches and encouraging people to follow Christ. They had the expectation that Jesus was coming.
coming back, not only that he was coming back, but that he would be back soon in their lifetime. At any moment, they expected that he would return. Then the disciples started to get some age on them. And they thought, you know, maybe we should write down some of these things because they were the authoritative source when it came to Jesus. They were the ones who were with him. They were the ones he taught. They were the authorities on faith. So as they started to get older, people started writing down these stories. And there's a story in Mark 6 about Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind, and he was sitting on the roadside, and he could hear Jesus and all the people with him coming down the road. And he cried out, and he said, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And then we know the rest of that story, how Jesus restored his sight. But that line, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, became a breath prayer for those earliest Christians. When they prayed, they would breathe in and think, Lord Jesus Christ. And as they exhaled, they would pray, have mercy on me. And that became a prayer practice. And it's a prayer practice that mystics and the saints in the church have practiced for centuries. But most of us struggle with words when we pray. Quick question. Who here is 100% satisfied with your prayer life? Anyone? That's one of the things we struggle with most as Christians, isn't it? As people of faith, we have really good intentions. We're going to pray every day. And we set aside time, okay, in the, in the mornings or maybe before bed. And we do our best to be intentional about it, but doggone it, that prayer turns into a grocery list, doesn't it? Or our minds start wandering, wandering into other things. Or if it's nighttime, we might fall asleep. Have you ever done that? You started praying and then the next morning you realize, oh wait, I never finished that. Or you say a beautiful prayer before a fellowship meal, and then you realize, yikes, I've got to pray for food. You know, or you sit down to pray, and then you're done, you did it, and then you forgot 13 things that you meant to pray about. I mean, praying with words is hard. Our prayer lives are frustrating. We want to be good prayers, don't we? But it's something that we just struggle with. But I want you to think about prayer this way. I mean, my prayer life changed dramatically when I understood that I didn't have to use words to pray. When I realized I could just sit in silence, when I could just sit and breathe, and that that was prayer, things really changed for me. It's called centering prayer. Guess what you do in centering prayer? You sit, you clear your mind, and you breathe. The linguistic connection between breath and spirit is unambiguous in the scriptures. In the Hebrew scriptures, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is ruach, and that is spirit. It's translated breath often in our English translations. In the beginning, when God spoke, God created. God spoke, and light separated from dark. God spoke, and the land pulled back from the waters, and the green carpets rolled out, and life began. When God spoke, the ocean gave forth life, and birds filled the air. When God spoke, animals grew legs and walked on the land. When God spoke, this universe was created. What do you have to do before you speak? You draw in a breath. You summon your breath and you speak. God summoned breath and spoke and there was, the world was created. In Genesis 2, God gets a good old clump of earth. And what does God do with that earth? 
God breathes into it, and human is formed. We come from breath. We are God's breath. God's breath is in us. When we live and move and have our being, it is with that breath. We are alive when we take our first breath. We are no longer alive when we exhale our last. Breath is life. Breath is our connection to God and to what's holy. And the simplicity of breathing can relieve us from the frustration that we often experience with prayer. Contemplative prayer awakens our attention so that we can listen for God in our lives. And usually that involves a change in perspective for us. The movie It's a Wonderful Life. You know that movie, right? It's the movie that just keeps on giving. I love this movie. And in it, we learn about George Bailey and about how he made decisions in his life and they mostly helped other people. I mean, he didn't go about doing big things. I mean, he did a time or two, but mostly it was just the decisions he made throughout his life that helped other people. He had a heart for the people in that town. He also had big dreams to go see the world, to travel the seven seas, and to fly in planes, and travel by trains, and on ships. And none of those happened because he kept choosing that town and the people in it. He never realized along the way the seeds that he had planted, the good that he had done. And when he found himself in trouble, trouble that were, was not his own making, he didn't see any other choice but to end his life. But he had a change of perspective when he was able to see that all of those times he had invested in other folks, he was investing in himself and in his life and in his eternal life. And when he was able to see with new eyes the power of the life he had, of the choices he made, of the love of people around him, his vision and perspective were forever different. The man who in one moment was the most desperate man in town, in the next was the wealthiest man in town. Whether you count it in dollars or in joy. Once we have our eyes open, to a powerful expression of God's love, we are different people. Breath prayers can do that for us. Got some homework for you. And it's going to take five minutes. In fact, it's not going to take a second past five minutes because I want you to set a timer. I want you to sit somewhere that's comfortable. And I want you to set a timer for five minutes. And during that five minutes, I want you to picture a light bulb in your gut, right behind your belly button. And when you breathe in, I want you to picture that light bulb growing and getting bright. And when you exhale, I want you to imagine all of that light going out from you. Do that for five minutes. You're going to get distracted. Other thoughts are going to come in. Don't judge yourself for that. Just acknowledge they came in and send them on their way. And just refocus on that light. Breathing in that light and exhaling that light to the world. And here's my promise to you. Three things are going to happen. One, five minutes is going to go by a lot faster than you expect it to. Two, your body's going to feel amazing. And three, you're going to feel so much peace. You'll feel content. You'll feel that presence of God within you. And then if you're daring and you do this more than once, if you do it a couple of times, you're going to get hooked on this practice. 
And it's going to be something that you're not going to be willing to give up. You're going to start scheduling other things around it. Once you do this a couple of times, it's going to have a profound effect on you. And each day, you're going to carve out time to ensure that you have that time. Because God is going to creep into your life in ways that you hadn't thought or expected. And you're going to find that in those five minutes, unless it becomes 10 or 15 or 20, that you're sitting with God. And that's holy time. And then you're going to find that that influences the other minutes in your day. And soon your prayers are going to start looking like, for some of you, holding a hammer at a Habitat house. Or a serving spoon in a food line. For others of you, it might look like connecting with music that speaks to your heart or with stories of other folks that speak profoundly of faith. For still others, it's going to feel like an understanding that comes through a powerfully created lecture or sermon or book or other reading. And for still others, it's going to look a lot like a hike through the woods or a paddle down the stream. Prayer is living. Living is prayer. Once we begin to connect with that breathing and that spirit within us, then we can understand when Paul says that pray, when he says pray without ceasing. Because as long as we are breathing, we are praying. And when we are aware of that, we can commune and connect with the presence of God within us in powerful powerful ways. Our lives begin when we draw in breath. They will conclude when we exhale the last. Be purposeful about breathing. We don't have to think about it. It's the most natural thing in the world to do. Talking to God and breathing. And when we put a little bit of purpose with it, It'll reveal the very presence and love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing. Let's stand as you're able.
have many joys and concerns in our community and in our world. Would anyone like to share how you've been blessed this week? Friday night was a blast. We did music bingo to raise money for the Backpack Project. And as you heard, we raised just under $3,600. That's a lot of school supplies for our community. And we had a lot of fun doing it. Are there other joys? Well, we just like to thank everyone for such a great thing for Millie's um, funeral. And, you know, I know she, she, you know, she was very present here and we'll all miss her. So thank you so much for all the love and support. I think that the meal, everybody came together and just the food was wonderful that everyone brought. Yeah. And the decorations were perfect. They were. <laughs> Beautiful flowers. Other joys? concerns and of course we will all be remembering all of the family and friends that loved Millie. Are there other concerns? prayers as family and of course Libby's parents are in our prayers. Other concerns? Oh, Dorothy is a hickory point so if you're looking for Dorothy she's a lot closer now and, and a lot happier so keep Dorothy in your prayers. Let us pray. Holy God, in this season, we know that you are the God of the impossible, that you can step into our world and accomplish far more than we could ever ask or even imagine. So we pray, O oh God, that as summer begins, you might open our minds to new truths about ourselves, open the eyes of our spirits to see how powerfully present you are. Help us that our spirits might grow in new ways. And God, empower us to be of service to others. For the people in this world who experience so much tragedy and violence and despair, for them we pray. For those who don't have the basic needs in life, food, shelter, and clothing, for them we pray. For those who don't know the love of family and friends, for them we pray. And God, for those among our family and friends who need healing in their bodies, minds, and spirits, hear us now as we breathe and as we pray. Gracious God, in these days ahead of us, help us to not keep your message of hope and love and grace locked in our hearts, but empower us to give it away by exuberant armfuls. Help us to share, to laugh, and to live your message with overflowing hands and expansive lives. Open each of us and our hearts and our spirits to the freshness of your love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And through infinite and holy wisdom, God has made all of this world, and God has asked us to be good stewards of it. 
Just as God supplies for our needs, we too supply for the needs of others and for our own world. However you choose to give, whether it's in person or through the mail or in some other way, know that in your giving you receive a blessing. And now we are invited to come around this table today. And it is at this table that, again, we ground ourselves in the truth of God's love for us. We gather here and we remember that God came to earth as a human who lived and breathed just as we do. And as we come around the table today, may we encounter these gifts of God, for they are given to the, all the people of God. Amen. Center our minds, 
quiet our anxious spirits, that we may know your peace. Let this bread and this cup strengthen and nourish us, so that all we have and all of our work may be sanctified by your presence. In Jesus' name we pray.